Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, chemistry PhD, skincare nerd, and sunscreen obsessive. One of the big misconceptions is how sunscreens work, in particular chemical versus physical sunscreens. I've debunked this a whole bunch of times before, and I have a video talking about the more technical details behind how both chemical and physical sunscreens absorb UV. But then I realized I could actually test this in real life, and maybe it'll be a little bit more convincing. If you like this sort of nerdy beauty content, click the like, the subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. So like I said before, both chemical and physical sunscreens mostly work by taking UV and converting it to a harmless amount of heat. Physical sunscreens also scatter about 5% of the incoming UV. The sun's energy is also about 53% infrared, which converts to heat directly on our skin, and only about 3-7% to is UV. So if most of that tiny amount of UV is converted to heat, and there's only a small amount of difference in that tiny amount of UV, there really shouldn't be much of a difference. But some people have questioned whether that tiny, tiny amount of heat is enough to make a difference. So I decided to test out what happens in reality. So conveniently, I found out that my boss, Alex, who is a former optics professor, actually owns an infrared camera. This takes photos that show things at different temperatures as different colors. And you can see down to about a one degree Celsius difference. So I convinced him to help me do some measurements with sunscreen to see if we could see any interesting differences. So he took a bunch of different sunscreens to a garden in Sydney during spring. The first thing we noticed when we started looking through the camera is that things that are made of different materials and whether or not they're in the sun makes a massive difference. A brown table in the sun was 65 degrees, the stone in the shade was seven degrees. You can see the color scale on the side, ignore the temperature in the middle, that's not always accurate, we wrote down the actual temperature numbers. The next thing I noticed was that things that I didn't think would make a difference actually made a pretty big difference. So for example, my arm near my elbow was hotter than my arm near my wrist. That's because things that are closer to the center of your body are warmer because it's getting more warmth from things like blood. I actually had a whole bunch of sunscreens, both chemical and physical, on my arm here, and you can't see any temperature differences but you can see the difference between the top of my arm and the bottom of my arm. Next, I put a big black text mark on my arm to see if it would make a difference. We all know that black things like to absorb lots of visible light from the sun and heat up, and there is a lot of visible light in sunlight. So we thought this would be a really good test to see what a thin film of something that absorbs light and produces heat really well would look like on the skin. But again, there just wasn't much of a difference. I'm pointing at the mark in these photos, and if you squint, you can just see it. But this does make sense. Humans are about two thirds water. Water is special because it has a really high specific heat capacity. That means it can absorb lots of heat energy without itself heating up very much. So basically your body is a huge heat sink. A thin film of something producing heat isn't producing very much heat. Your body can easily absorb that and handle that without itself heating up. So we decided to get rid of the heat sink and see if we could see any differences without it. We applied two of the sunscreens, one chemical, one physical, onto a thin piece of plastic. Well, I applied them while Alex took random photos. At the start, the chemical sunscreen was actually four degrees colder. We figured it was because the sunscreens were still drying and so ethanol was evaporating from that. Ethanol, when it evaporates, cools down something significantly. We tried again 10 minutes later after everything dried and we found that the physical sunscreen was one degree colder. But then we rotated the film by 180 degrees and we found that the chemical sunscreen was one degree colder. So it seems like the angle of the film and the angle of the sun makes a bigger difference than the type of sunscreen. So the plastic film I liberated from a nearby construction site was actually red and white. So we decided to just look at that through the camera. The red part of the tape was actually six degrees hotter than the white part. And so it seems like the color that something is makes a much bigger difference than whether a sunscreen is chemical or physical. For the final test, I liberated a napkin from a nearby restaurant and I blobbed on nine different sunscreens. I had chemical sunscreens, physical sunscreens, combo sunscreens, and even one that claimed to have IR protection and cooling effects. Again, we waited 10 minutes for everything to dry and then we looked through the IR camera. The first thing we noticed was that the tinted sunscreens were hotter than the white ones. With the rest of the sunscreens, there wasn't really much of a pattern between which ones are hotter and cooler in terms of whether they were physical or chemical. 
I was particularly disappointed with the infrared one. I really expected that to have some sort of noticeable difference. So these results make sense based on the mechanism of how chemical and physical sunscreens work and the law of conservation of energy. There shouldn't really be much heat produced at all, and only the tiniest difference between chemical and physical sunscreens. And given how watery human bodies work, any heat that is produced should be dissipated really, really quickly. It just spreads into the rest of your body. There is a lot more visible light in sunlight than there is UV. There can be more than 10 times as much. So it isn't surprising that things that absorb visible light heat up a lot more than things that absorb UV, so this is things like tinted sunscreens and red tape. But even then, when you do put it on your skin, because of that heat sink effect, there just isn't much of a difference. There was a much bigger difference between the two parts of my arm than with the black marker and no black marker. So the difference in heat between chemical and physical sunscreens is insignificant. There are other reasons to pick chemical over physical or physical over chemical, but the amount of heat produced just shouldn't factor into your decision making. After we did all this, I actually found a paper where some physicists calculated how much a titanium dioxide sunscreen would heat up your skin. They calculated 0.2 degrees Celsius. So I hope that was a convincing demonstration and hopefully that does kill this myth a bit more. Let me know what you think. Were you surprised by these results? I was actually quite surprised. I was actually hoping that we would see something interesting. There would be some sort of a difference, but I guess science works. Let me know if you have any other topic suggestions in the comments below. Click the like and the subscribe if you like my videos. You can also check me out on Instagram at labmuffinbeautyscience and my blog labmuffin.com. See you next time to nerd out more.